Well, Guy Fieri, it's five straight years for you now at the Emmy Awards. You, your show, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, you are the flagship for the Food Network. You, you go into battle for them every year here at the Emmy Awards. What does that feel like? Overwhelming. I mean, it's a, it's a great honor. I got, uh, I got the opportunity to be on the Food Network kind of in a crazy way. And uh, so to now be the guy that gets the opportunity to represent in five years, you know, five years in a row is, is pretty great. I mean, I'm, uh, I really appreciate the opportunity and I really appreciate the people that I'm in the mix with, you know, there's just some fantastic shows out there and people doing great entertainment and um, they're all a little bit different, but it's a nice, it's, it's quite an honor. Your category, which is structured reality is such a wide six shows, but they're all so different from each other. Without question, without question. And, you know, Shark Tank has been dominating uh, for so long, and rightly so. I mean, they're, they're amazing. They've got great talent. The idea of the structure of the show is great, the way it's shot, the way it's edited, um, lip sync. I mean, I could just go on about each one of them. And that's why I say, you know, people ask me, so do you think you're going to win this year? You know, this is your fifth. So, you know what? Just getting called back up. I mean, that's, of course, I want to win. But, I mean, just getting called back up to be in this in present company, pretty awesome. I hope you don't have to wait this long. I just had James Lipton on last week from inside the actor's studio. They won his only Emmy on the 16th try. Well, 16 might be a little tough. It might be a little tough for me. I know that there's a few more triple D's at least, but I don't know. It'll probably be my son Hunter doing triple D if it's 16. You'll just be like an executive producer lounging it back at home yeah. at, at that point. He, listen, this kid's already, I just did a big show with my kids going cross country. Um, called the uh, Fieri Family Road Trip, Road Trip, and uh, both of my boys really stepped up, and that's one of the questions that you know he's kind of hinting. He's like, "I think Hunter will come back into it." I said, "I don't know. I think Hunter's going off to the restaurant business." Why did this show take off so well? Not just with Emmy voters, but I mean, my parents watch it, my nephews watch it. I've watched so many of them. Why does it appeal to so many people? <sighs> like the million? What is this million dollar question, or is this the internet? Uh, I don't know. You know, I think I think I do have a. I mean, I've got different parts of why I think the show resonates with folks. Um, one, I'm a regular dude. I'm a chef. I'm a dad. I'm here in my house in Northern California. Um, I love food, and I think that we all—that's our common denominator as people, as as a group—is we all love food. Some people love it more than others, and some show it different ways. But we all—it's it, it's what brings us together. So you can show me any experience, good or bad. And food's been there. And I think that when I get a chance to go and highlight for, uh, for folks places around the country that they might not normally stop at or an area they may not go to and say, hey, wait a second, slow down, take a look at this place. You know, you, yeah, you go right by it. No, there's no advertising for it. Check it out. I think that's what people love. I think they love the discovery of it. They love the food about it. They love the family story about it. They love the, the heartbeat of it. And uh, I'm just, you know, like I said, I mean, I'm honored just to be the guy that gets to say, look at these people. You know, these, these are, here's an amazing family doing amazing food and uh, come check it out. And then the people check it out and then, well, then that's a whole other story. Well, it seems very relatable to me. I mean, I can't, I can't put myself in the place of somebody that would want to go into a really fancy $200 meal French restaurant, but I can, I can certainly, uh, in fact, you, you had, uh, when I was living near Memphis, you had a, a small little barbecue place on there one week and we had to make the drive over. I mean, we just had to go see this place. I'm what you see is what you get. You know, I don't, I'm not a fancy fine dining kind of guy. Do I enjoy it? Oh yeah. I've eaten at, you know, amazing restaurants, but for me, just as a regular person, I enjoy simple home cooked, relatable food. I love ethnic food. You know, a lot of folks don't even recognize how ethnic we are in, 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 uh, in triple D. I try to find places. I, I it, listen, I don't want it. I, I don't want there to be any reason that we don't go to a spot. And so we really turn folks on everything from vegetarian to Lebanese to, you know, to Greek to Italian to all American, you name it. And uh, that's what it is. I think that people can relate to the fact that, wait a second, guy goes there, you know, and the price point's got to be pretty acceptable. And, uh, hey, I've never been to Tennessee. I'm going to go, you know, let's take a road trip. You know, we live close by. And that's kind of what happens. And I, I hope that's inspired. Well, I know that it's inspired a lot of folks to, to kind of venture out and go outside of their you know, their uh, comfort zone. And when they do it, they kind of go, wait, check this out, man. This whole big world, this whole big United States, and even outside the United States, is just blossoming with these amazing uh, family 
restaurants. And, and that's the real beauty of the show. I mean, that's the whole thing that connects because I think that we get stuck in our circle of what we do, like where we live. And then you go, you know, like to a new city. And of course you go to the place that's right next to the hotel. But when your buddy, this guy says, Hey, wait a second. Next time you're in Chicago, venture outside of Chicago 15 minutes. And there's this funky little place that's doing Italian, you know, uh, Italian beef sandwiches. You got to check it out. And that's what happens. Take us behind the scenes a little bit. How would a place first get on your radar to, to know to go there? Ouija board, a lot of times. Darts. <laughs> Matt, no, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, when we first started, and this is really the, this is the truth. When we first started, it was places that I knew about or friends of mine knew about. And they, they, I'm telling you, this is hysterical because I had called some of the first places that I wanted to go to. Like, oh, I know this place. We've got to go there and check it out. And I called them and I said, hey, um, well, I didn't call, but the producer called and said, hey, there's this thing, a guy wants to come to your place, and um, the show's called Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. And they'd go, well, we're not, we're not a diner, and we're not a drive-in, and if you think we're a dive, no way we're on the show. Click. And that happened to more places than one, I'm telling you. And so, uh, oddly enough, a couple years later, they'd all call back and say, well, we didn't understand. We didn't understand the way the show was working. But um, so it's a lot of recommendation from the viewers. It's a lot of recommendation now because we've done so many, we've done over a thousand triple D joints. Now we have triple D joints that understand kind of what we're looking for. And they'll call us and recommend, hey, the next time you come back to, you know, Chicago, check this place out. This, you know, we know this guy and this is what he does. So it's, it's a mix match of how it comes about. And, uh, it, it, you know, at one point in my career, one point in the triple D world, I thought, wow, we're going to run out this show could go on for the next 30 years. I mean, there's just, we are in the middle of the food revolution and so many amazing places opening and, and continuing success. It'll never stop. Never stop. So what's, it like, what's it like before you arrive? Are they all scrambling to get everything just perfect and they, they get all the right people in uh, for the shoot and so forth? You know, I've got such an amazing team. I, I attribute to, I mean, all the success, honestly. I, I It's easy. I think it's easy to throw the touchdown passes that I'm doing or the opportunities that I have because of the team. Um, and a lot of these folks I've been working with for, you know, over nine, 10 years now. And what it is, is they have, we have such a method, we have such a style and such a, an approach. I don't want people nervous. It does no good for anybody for them to be nervous because then they won't act themselves or they won't tell the family story the right way or they won't cook the dish the right way. So what we try to do is go in establish what we're going to do with them, kind of lay it out for them, spend a day with them shooting and kind of getting what we call the B-roll um, or two, depending on the location, and just kind of set them at ease. And just and one of the things I always tell my crew, make sure that they know when I come in, let's just let's have fun. Let's just do this and, and enjoy it. And I don't want them, because if we have to spend a bunch of time with them being nervous about being on TV, then they don't get to, they don't get to be presented as, as uh, who they really are. So there's a big, a big advance team with the, with the uh, production uh, a month, two months in advance. Then uh, for the two weeks prior to it, a tremendous amount of communication back and forth. And then two days prior to my arrival, my team's in there working things out. I come in, we shoot the piece, meet the family, do the stuff, have the guests, eat the food, and uh, on to the next location. But we'll do three locations um, in one day. Wow. From my it's a big, it's a big day when we go into a town, but I've got, you know, I've got a team of 22 plus people that are all on the ground making this happen. Everybody from someone handling the car to someone getting the, you know, the production crew from one location to the next. I mean, it's, it's a lot of cameras, a lot of people, a lot of, and, and the whole reason we do it that way, I want to make sure that we make these restaurants and these families look as great as they can. I mean, this is the one chance in a lifetime for most of them. And the last thing I want to do is have it. I, I want the production to be 110% so they can look as great as they are. And that's really the whole thing. But that's the reason I do the show. I do the show because I know as a private restaurant owner, you know, having started out with just my own one little restaurant, that you can't afford advertising and, and radio and TV and all this. And how do you get that kind of attention? And so this opportunity to have the, shot, the spotlight of America, the spotlight of the world put on you, and you get to you get to do you sing your song is uh, is awesome. So I want to make sure that when it's my side of that responsibility that we make sure we highlight them in the greatest way we can. I don't want the drama, and I don't want them. When I tell them, don't worry about saying something wrong. We I don't air someone saying something stupid. Yeah, that's just not 
that's not what the show's about. We're not, we're not uncovering things. We're not, you know, this isn't a, uh, we're not a food review. That's not what this is about. This is about presenting and highlighting what people are, the great things that people are doing. And you're not live, so you can always edit. Yeah, we try to, I roll cameras. When I walk in the door, we start rolling cameras because a lot of times when that just becomes commonplace and they don't get so worried about the cameras focused on them, there's just a lot of things that I learned when I first got on TV that made me more comfortable. If the camera team's real comfortable, if everybody talks to you, if you know why someone's putting this mic in your shirt and you know what's going on, it makes you a little bit more at ease. But, uh, yeah, it's not to be – there's no, yeah, it's, it's, it's all positive energy. And that's all I'm looking for. So I want to make sure that, but I also, and very, very truthfully, people will say to me, well, uh, you can't like everything. I mean, come on, you can't like everything that you taste. And no, I don't. There, there's some, there's some locations you haven't seen because it didn't work out. There's some dishes you haven't seen because it didn't work out. I'm not saying that every single thing in the location is off the hook. I'm just saying that I'm trying this burger. I'm trying this, uh, Baba Ganoush, or I'm trying this, you know, carne asada, or this al pastor, and, and that is really, you know, and this is what I'm tasting. But don't think that everything that I tell you is, uh, that don't think that everything that's going on in this place, I'm certifying or whatever you want to call it. Um, but no, we show the positive sides of what they're doing. And if there is big, bad, I mean, we get their health department report. We know going in if we've got what we're dealing with and if it's a place that we want to represent. Of all, of the, all things, the things you've done recently, recently I'll, 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 I'll give my back here. here. Of all the things you've done recently, I know there's been a lot of great ones over the years. What's a dish or two that just really surprised you in a good way lately? Oh, where were we recently? That lamb soup in Rudy Gary. It's always tough about that. Oh, when we did the tacos. No, that wasn't in, in Eureka. Uh, soup company. Soup, soup. No, no, no. We did a place. See, now you have to remember, I've been gone for, uh, I've been gone for three months um, doing the road trip. I produced a new show called Guy's Big Project which is uh, me developing talent into having their own show, kind of similar to a Triple D, but a different, their own style of Triple D. So I did that project across the country, and I took my family across the country. So it's been three months so I did, since I did a location. Um, but let's, So we did a place, where was it? Virginia Beach. We were down in Virginia Beach. We did a couple of places in Virginia Beach that were out of control. But one in particular, it was a meat market during the day, which made some outrageous, delicious sandwiches and butchered their own meats and so forth. And then the meat market turned over to an Asian fusion, fusion restaurant at night. And it was just, I mean, okay, too good to be true. There's no way this is working. One of them's not gonna be great, but they were both outstanding. And then also we were down there, we went to a Mexican restaurant and I'm always into finding ethnic food outside of where people would expect to find it. And these folks were doing um, a lamb taco um, that um, that was just uh, just out. I mean, it, again, so it's not trying to. I'm not trying to go around trying to find fish out of water all the time, but I am trying to find unique places that you might not say. Wait a second, just how credible is that place really? Speaking of surprises, I can still remember. I thought it was a lookalike. Or just somebody that kind of looked like him. But years ago, you had a diner experience where Gene Hackman was just sitting there eating lunch. And I, I loved that. Let me tell you. And the funny, you want to hear the whole story behind this? I don't know how much time we have. I apologize. Sure, go ahead. It's a little long-winded. But, um, okay. So Gene Hackman is having lunch and we're in Santa Fe at the Roadhouse. And, again, I apologize that I can't remember them all. When it gets over 1,000, and we've done, you know, how many, 350 shows. I, my head gets a little, little sideways. But we're in Santa Fe. We're at the Roadhouse. I believe it's called the Roadhouse. And Gene happens there. Well, I mean, the nicest guy in the world. And I, so I go over to him. He's sitting at a table. And, the, you know, we'd asked if we could come over and say hello. And, and uh, as I'm walking over to say hello to him, um, and we start engaging in a little bit of conversation, the table next to me, an older woman is having a dish that something's not right. Either it had syrup or didn't want syrup or needed the egg or whatever. So she flags me down and says, excuse me, excuse me, waiter, could you please get my dish? <laughs> excuse me, Mr. Hackman. I grab her plate. I take it back to the kitchen and I came back over the table and he laughed. He thought that was really funny, but he was a great guy. We had a, but you know, the, the, the funny thing is, is we have such a great fan base of people that watch Triple D 
because again, getting back to that whole that whole piece, every, everybody loves food. I mean, what a great job I have to be able to go around and just highlight awesome places that people want to visit. But we've had some real characters come on the show. Um, yeah, it's been that's that's always that's always one of the highlights. Well. You're a highlight for me. I watch almost every week, and uh, uh, the, I get into the marathons too. They'll show eight or ten episodes in a row sometimes. Um, so good luck at the Emmys. I hope uh, will you be there? Will I see you on the red carpet? Well, I think that's what they're trying to put together. You know, the schedule inside of the world of restaurants and the side of television doesn't always coincide, and I'm running both of those uh, both of those lives, getting ready to open restaurants down in Dubai. But, uh, you know, I just like I said at the beginning, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about this because it's something you can't really have a regular conversation about. It's like so big and it's like wrapping your mind around the opportunity. But uh, I just really appreciate being invited. I appreciate the, the – I just appreciate the fact that people like the show because that keeps the show going and it keeps this opportunity for all these mom and pop uh, small restaurants to continue to get the spotlight and that changes lives. And I can tell you story after story. That, there's a show there just telling the story about what happens to them and how, uh, you know, what their, what their future becomes after the show visits. So um, thanks for taking the time. Glad you enjoy it. Keep watching it. And uh, I'll continue to try to uh, continue to make it good.